brave man might feel afraid and not be ashamed. Now, as this knight one day was pricking wearily along a toilsome road, his heart misgave him, and was sore within him because of the trouble of the way. Rocks, dark and of a monstrous size, hung high above his head, and like enough it seemed unto the knight that they should fall and he lie low beneath them. Chasms there were on either side, and darksome caves wherein fierce robbers lived, and dragons very terrible whose jaws dripped blood. And upon the road there hung a darkness as of night. So it came over that good knight that he would no more press forward, but seek another road, less grievously beset with difficulty unto his gentle steed. But when in haste he turned and looked behind, much marvelled our brave knight, for lo, of all the way that he had ridden, there was naught for eye to see. But at his horse's heels there yawned a mighty gulf, whereof no man might ever spy the bottom, so deep was that same gulf. Then when Sir Gellant saw that of going back there was none, he prayed to good Saint Cuthbert, and setting spurs into his steed, rode forward bravely and most joyously, and naught harmed him. There is no returning on the road of life. The frail bridge of time on which we tread sinks back into eternity at every step we take. The past is gone from us for ever. It is gathered in and garnered. It belongs to us no more. No single word can ever be unspoken. No single step retraced. Therefore, it beseems us as true knights to prick on bravely, not idly weep, because we cannot now recall. A new life begins for us with every second. Let us go forward joyously to meet it. We must press on whether we will or no, and we shall walk better with our eyes before us than with them ever cast behind. A friend came to me the other day and urged me very eloquently to learn some wonderful system by which you never forgot anything. I don't know why he was so eager on the subject, unless it be that I occasionally borrow an umbrella, and have a knack of coming out in the middle of a game of whist with a mild, Law, I've been thinking all along that clubs were trumps. I declined the suggestion, however, in spite of the advantages he so attractively set forth. I have no wish to remember everything. There are many things in most men's lives that had better be forgotten. There is that time, many years ago, when we did not act quite as honourably, quite as uprightly, as we perhaps should have done. That unfortunate deviation from the path of strict probity we once committed, and in which, more unfortunate still, we were found out. That act of folly, of meanness, of wrong. Ah, well, we paid the penalty, suffered the maddening hours of vain remorse, the hot agony of shame, the scorn, perhaps, of those we loved. Let us forget. O oh, Father Time, lift with your kindly hands those bitter memories from off our overburdened hearts, for griefs are ever coming to us with the coming hours, and our little strength is only as the day. Not that the past should be buried. The music of life would be mute if the chords of memory were snapped asunder. It is but the poisonous weeds, not the flowers, that we should root out from the garden of Nemosyne. Do you remember Dickens' haunted man? How he prayed for forgetfulness, and how, when his prayer was answered, he prayed for memory once more. We do not want all the ghosts laid. It is only the haggard, cruel-eyed spectres that we flee from. Let the gentle, kindly phantoms haunt us as they will. We are not afraid of them. Ah, me! The world grows very full of ghosts as we grow older. We need not seek in dismal churchyards, nor sleep in moated granges to see the shadowy faces and hear the rustling of their garments in the night. Every house, every room, every creaking chair has its own particular ghost. They haunt the empty chambers of our lives. They throng around us like dead leaves whirled in the autumn wind. Some are living, some are dead. We know not. We clasped their hands once, loved them, quarrelled with them, laughed with them, 
told them our thoughts and hopes and aims as they told us theirs, till it seemed our very hearts had joined in a grip that would defy the puny power of death. They are gone now, lost to us forever. Their eyes will never look into ours again, and their voices we shall never hear. Only their ghosts come to us and talk with us. We see them, dim and shadowy, through our tears. We stretch our yearning hands to them, but they are air. Ghosts. They are with us night and day. They walk beside us in the busy street, under the glare of the sun. They sit by us in the twilight at home. We see their little faces looking from the windows of the old school house. We meet them in the woods and lanes where we shouted and played as boys. Hark! Cannot you hear their low laughter from behind the blackberry bushes, and their distant whoops along the grassy glades? Down here, through the quiet fields and by the wood, where the evening shadows are lurking, winds the path where we used to watch for her at sunset. Look, she's there now, in the dainty white frock we knew so well, with the big bonnet dangling from her little hands, and the sunny brown hair all tangled. Five thousand miles away. Dead, for all we know. What of that? She is beside us now, and we can look into her laughing eyes and hear her voice. And the shadows will creep out across the fields, and the night wind will sweep past, moaning. Ghosts. They are always with us, and always will be, while the sad old world keeps echoing to the sob of long goodbyes, while the cruel ships sail away across the great seas, and the cold green earth lies heavy on the hearts of those we loved. But, oh, ghosts, the world would be sadder still without you. Come to us and speak to us, O oh, you ghosts of our old loves, ghosts of playmates and of sweethearts and old friends, of all you laughing boys and girls. O oh, come to us and be with us, for the world is very lonely, and new friends and faces are not like the old, and we cannot love them, nay, nor laugh with them, as we have loved and laughed with you. And when we walked together, O oh ghosts of our youth, the world was very gay and bright, but now it has grown old and we are growing weary, and only you can bring the brightness and the freshness back to us. Memory is a rare ghost-raiser. Like a haunted house, its walls are ever echoing to unseen feet. Through the broken casements we watch the flitting shadows of the dead, and the saddest shadows of them all are the shadows of our own dead selves. Oh, those young bright faces, so full of truth and honour, of pure good thoughts, of noble longings, how reproachfully they look upon us with their deep clear eyes. I fear they have good cause for their sorrow, poor lads. Lies and cunning and disbelief have crept into our hearts since those pre-shaving days, and we meant to be so great and good. It is well we cannot see into the future. There are few boys of fourteen who would not feel ashamed of themselves at forty. I like to sit and have a talk sometimes with that odd little chap that was myself long ago. I think he likes it too, for he comes so often of an evening when I am alone with my pipe, listening to the wind.